Hey, friends and neighbors, fans, family, everybody involved of Bob's Barn Workshop. Bob here today. I just wanted to let you know I'm doing this chair creaks awful, doesn't it? I just want you to know that today I'm doing a video changing some tires, which has been my most popular ever video is changing a tire on my Envoy. But I just wanted to let any newcomers know that I have well over a hundred other videos that I've made over the last three years doing everything from cabinetry work to electrical work to uh, working on classic cars like my 67 Mustang and 72 Beetle. Lawn equipment, uh, again tire mounting, uh, remodeling, installing hardwood floors, you name it, I've done it. I've recorded it because, and I always show the whole process. No shortcuts, no editing out the hard stuff. If there's hard stuff, that's the stuff I want you to see because I want you to know what you can possibly run into when you do some of these projects. Now, by no means is this a tutorial lesson on how to do it right. This is how I've figured out how to do things. So don't take any of this stuff to the bank that it's the right way to do it. It's just stuff that I've learned over the years to do. Now the electrical wiring, I was an electrical contractor. Oh, I got an eyelash in my eye. Electrical contractor for uh, many years had my own company. I'm pretty good at that. So I can be pretty, and I was into electronics for over 35 years working at Westinghouse, working at Kodak, working at a, a local uh, university, Rochester Institute of Technology. So that I'm pretty uh, well versed in. The rest of the stuff is stuff I've just learned over the years. The woodworking, fiddling with cars. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks YouTube. Thanks uh, Tony, my uh, son-in-law, to, uh, to, to learn how to do this stuff. I mean, I had mini bikes and go-karts and stuff when I was a kid and learned how to fix those motors and, and clean and adjust the points just by learning, by doing it, figuring it out. So. Today, I hope you enjoy this video. It's kind of long. There's a lot of, you know, fooling around with these tires because they're tough. The smaller the rim, the harder the tire is to get on and off. I'll tell you that clue. So, please enjoy. Please subscribe. Please comment. Um, let me know what you think, what you want to see. Uh, I, I mentioned at the end of this video a lot of different projects I got coming up. So, stay to the end and watch and listen to what I've got coming up. Uh, again, you know, here they come the holidays like a steamroller. Pretty soon we'll be into Halloween, and that's like that's like the beginning of the avalanche. And pretty soon it'll be middle of January, and it'll all be over, and we'll go. Phew. But yeah, we love the holidays, don't we? All right, guys. God bless. Take care. See you at the end of the video. Hey, friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. Today. You're in for a special treat, something that you guys all seem to love. My biggest videos are about changing tires. Yes, I have a couple of new Kenda tires, which I love. Let me get it out of the box here. Look at those beasts. These are for the rear of my lawn tractor, which are shot. Um, a highly aggressive tread, but it doesn't chew up the yard either. It works great in snow. I've got them on the front of the tractor. You saw me change those a couple years ago. Now we're going to do these big beasts, these 12 inch. They're almost the size of car tires. We'll see how it goes. i got to try to get these, uh, the way they're dented in, I'm hoping it's not a big huge hassle getting them on the rims. First thing is i got to figure out how to get them off the tractor. Alright, so as soon as I eat breakfast, we're going to start yeah, on Yeah, I need project. to go get the tractor and bring it around.
busy today. Uh, Gotta chalk those wheels. Of course, I got wheel weights on there for the winter. I've got to figure out how I'm gonna get them. I probably need the brakes off. I don't know. Let me take a quick look under here and see what we got. Oh, it looks like it bolts on just like a car wheel. Um, I got two big bolts coming in from the back for so let me figure out what size nuts I need for those, or sockets I need for those. We'll get that done. Well, I found out there are uh, three quarter inch bolts, and on the inside is a long stud, so I've got my uh, long extension on that with a deep socket. They're what, 75 pounds a piece? Maybe not quite that much, I don't know. popular videos are car chain changing tires. Uh. So why not? Let's take the other one off the same way and uh, I'll be back. A couple years ago, I don't know if you saw a video on this, I uh, It doesn't really matter where I lift it. I'm going to lift it right under the ball hitch. I put that on there so that I can pull implements a lot easier than trying to mess around with a pin. These tires are so bad anyway, I can see the sidewalls are cracked on them. They're shot. Alright. Let's see what size. Believe it or not, these are uh, English nuts and bolts. Believe it or not, it's about like five eighths. Bingo. And it looks like the back side of them is not rusty. So, that should come right off. I need a short extension here. That little spring-loaded ball needs to I think this Dewalt wrench is more powerful than an air. Except for maybe your biggest commercial. Freaking thing to the beast. All right. Well, there's parts of this machine I've never seen. Still got half a tank of fuel. I'm assuming there's some sort of grease fitting in here. I'm not gonna mess with. But yeah, these are badly weather checked. And uh, the other side. Um, goes flat regularly. So these are 
zinc plated grade 5 bolts they got on everything here. English. So, those are off. Stink bog. Must be that time of year. Get off. That's your stink bog. Alright. So let's see. Is there anything I can do with my foot? Down in here. Pop this out. They really don't want to do anything. So I got a feeling this is going to be a big pain to get on the rim. Because this wants to squeeze together. I was lucky these came uh, in a nice big cardboard box. This is a Kenda. And if you notice, the tread is the same as my, my front tires. Aggressive, but it won't tear up the dirt like, like a tractor tire or tread. So, off to the barn we go, guys, to try and get these changed. Yeah, look at the sidewalls. No wonder they're leaking. You can see the big, big splits. And these are tubeless. And there's big splits. So these are junk. I was going to give them away, but they're, they're shop. hardly any pressure in them. But Bob has a tool to do this. They're very stiff sidewalls, so I'm definitely going to need... Alright, I'm going to move it all out to the barn. Here we are. Ready for another quick change. Oh, i got to turn the uh, air compressor on. I want to test this for leaks before I, uh, I want to check the valve stem. I don't plan on changing the valve stem, so I want to make sure the valve stem is not leaking. Um, got to dash around here and get the soap. So I bet you're all glad I did put that uh, compressor up in the attic. I'm going to pump this up excessively. So I just want to check that valve stem, make sure that's not where she's leaking. I mean, they used to be. I've been wanting to change these anyway. I'm, this will just help loop the bead too. I got a feeling it's coming from the sidewall somewhere because it's not coming from the schrader. You know, I like to say schrader, right? Yeah. Look at this. Great big splits. I'm surprised it ain't leaking though. Not seeing bubbling. Whatever, she goes flat. That's all I can tell you. I probably should have bought new valves because I don't want to have to do this again. But this is how what it is. Now, as you can see, the drop center is very close on these, which is where the tire wheel diameter is a bit quite a bit smaller than the bead so when I push that bead in it's going to allow the tire to be able to move this way and come off the rim easily uh, and it's that way on both sides so let me pull that valve oh I got my pocket knife clipped in there it makes it hard to get in my pocket so maybe I got a hole in the tread oh yeah the tread has lots of splits too Side, you might as well take this side. Where's my hole? She said. So you've seen this before, guys, right? Right. I don't have any soap or oil with me. I'm just going to soak this. 
Use soap and water as a lubricant on your nuts and bolts, you know. So you know how this works. This guy leaves up there. This guy goes on here. Threads into the nut. Wish it was a little longer, she said. Pusher goes on here, yeah. Whew. You probably need to switch this around the other way. And just set that on there like that. Yeah, that'll work. And somewhere here, I had the right knot driver for this. Let's watch it from this side. There you go. Da -da -da. some oil slash soapy water too. Yeah, it's going to want to skid right in there. That's the problem. Oh. Act like you did this before. Wow. There she goes. I'm going to knock this around square. I didn't say it was going to be easy. She stood good. Sometimes you just got to work these things off. Things, get things are getting hot in Batavia tonight. Batavia. Washers up good. Right. Life is but a dream. Ow, 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 ow. That our washer is really hot. Let that sit a minute, that might pop. 
Yep, it's going. It's going. It's going. Have a little patience sometimes. All right. So that's how we remove them, boys. Just some two by fours and scrap wood. A big knot, a big bolt. It really don't matter which side we take this off. So here we are. Now I could. I've got another bolt that I could put down in there, but let's see what we can do with a couple of old fashioned. How's the view? Good old fashioned tire. I've done this before. I stick this one under here so I can pull this one out and that holds it there. Now she's going to come real easy because it's halfway and now I can slide back off the wheel. this guy. It would be handy if this was pulled down. I do have a bolt for doing this. Oh, come on, you bitch. There we go. Now, you know, I've done these from behind before. You've probably seen me do that too. Get this honky. Up in there. I'm doing from the back. I'm not turning upside down, see? And you create a gap. Get your fingers in there just in case she pops back. She's coming up though. I probably can get that with my little one. Easier to get it in there. That's what she said. There you go. Wasn't bad at all, was it? Come on. That was flipping easy. All right. One down. Let's put the other one on while we're in here. wheel is out in the, the barn still. I should have laid this tire out in the sun or something. I'm going to take the... got to find some paper towels here. I'm going to take the uh, wire wheel Clean up any areas on this that looks rusty. Most of it's perfect. I got one little rusty spot right there, probably where it sat for a long time, and the water collected in the rim. The rest of it looks fine. So, It's not even rust, it's like sealing or something. There's a little bit of rust right there on the corner. It's a lawn tractor, you know, what can I say? It's dirty, yep, it's dirty. Clean it just a little bit. Now, when 
you do a car tire, you have to put it on from the front because usually the drop center is closest to the front. And that allows you to get the wheel on there, the tire on there, much easier. So I always start with the valve in the back. And soap up the tire on the edge of the rim. See what we can do. Sometimes you can these will almost pop on by themselves, but I gotta feel like this baby ain't gonna do that because she's just too stiff. Yeah. Of course if I had my wheel on here better. So you got her started here, you get in here just a little ways. fingers in between the tire and the bead though. That would be painful. Move it another couple inches. Pressure over the bead. Over the edge of the tire, I mean. Over the edge of the rim. Come on, baby. There she goes. She's about 75% of the way on. easier, sometimes it's not. The bigger the tire, usually the easier they go on the rim because you've got a little bit more open room. Now sometimes I'll put a C-clamp. See, I'm working it around all by itself. So, if I can get this side to pop. And then get it to pop again. It should be more than halfway, and it's going to stay. Yeah, okay. Now we're good. Now it's going to stay by itself. Do 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 do. The hell happened to my other? Oh no, there it is. This is the hardest part because you got to get that tire wheel, the tire itself, down into that drop center. That's where it gets the slack. These beads, tires have big wads of wire in the rims and they ain't gonna stretch. You don't stretch beads. I said that before. You're sliding that into that drop center now. See it's dropped into the drop center. She should go pretty much on the next one. Only go three or four inches. I don't need that in there anymore. The next hardest part is going to be inflating the SOB. There you go. One tractor tire mounted, guys. So this should take air. I'm gonna dry these out. I'm putting bead sealer on them. Whew, I'm sweating. Oh. So
sweating, sweating all over my glasses. Can we see me having all this fun? Oh yeah. So, I gotta say that. Why do I say so? So, I'm just gonna slap a bunch of this stuff down in there. Let it drizzle off the brush for a little while here. Get the mess gone. For highway use, really. You're, you're kidding me, right? I can't race my tractor down the highway? finger up good. I don't care if this even shows on the tire because it's just a tractor. Let me do the other side. When we get done we'll wipe it off the surface, don't worry. Same mistake, I'll have to drop back in. I'm trying to get a little bit on the metal of the wheel and a little bit on the feet of the tire. Get my fingers in there, keep it pulled up. It's always messy to put bead seal around, but... Okay. Okay. But it looks like everything's sitting tight. So this should be a piece of cake. Put my shredder down there. A little spit on her to clean her off. What do you think? What's our chances? Oh yeah. Oops, booze and sealer. I did. Bada bing, bada boom, boys. Oh, that isn't quite all the way on yet. I gotta give her a little more juice here. Wait for her to pop. There she goes. Love that pop. <laughs> yeah. Wipe off the goo. All right, guys. I got one more to do. I'm gonna take this back out front, bring the other tire in, and we'll put it back on. I'm sure this has got way too much air in it. It only needs like 10 or 12 pounds. But I had to inflate it to get it onto the rim.
I think this would be a great tire on an ATV or a big go-kart or whatever, big four-wheeler. All right, I'm going to carry this out front. We'll be back. Tire two. Actually, the next this tire to put on here is way more distorted out of shape. than the first one was. And I know this one never lost air, so... Spill it out in there. Press it down a little bit. Oh gosh, that runs way down in there. You can feel it pull loose. See if I got some Earl over here. Thought I had some Earl. It was in a container that said Earl. Well, now all else fails, use some old grease. All right. I've had this can of grease since I was about 16, 18. And I just use it for stuff like this now, but it's probably as good as the day it was new. I don't know how far down that goes, but anyway. And then these washers need some in between. She's really burning in there. I got a couple of washer stacks so it'll help. Help keep her slimy. Alright. Schlick, schlicker. Alright. Schlicker up. Gotta do it this way. That'll be better. I don't get my fingers in there. <clears throat> get that. Boom! I think easing that water underneath them helped because she didn't go too far and she popped. <sighs> well, I'm not going to do that. Last time I, uh, I've done this before, Except I got splashed in the face pretty good. <laughs> Originally, for you who, have seen, who are seeing this for the first time, my most popular video is changing a tire with this station. I got 500,000 views approximately on it. Now normally on a car tire you turn this, well, this goes into one of the slots. So this sticks out farther over the edge of the tire. For this I'm gonna ha I have to turn it this way, which just gives this side a little bit more travel. So I don't care. And that's a 5 8 rod and there's a plate with a nut welded on the bottom of my bench. Now I used to use this as a motorcycle tire changing station, not with the 
the impact. I just used to use it with a tire rim and I bolted it down to hold it with it. Car tires come off even easier because the rings are smaller. So we're done with this part. That went fast, didn't it, dudes? All right. As I said earlier, you don't have to worry which side of this rim because the drop centers are equal. But you do want to get it pushed down so that the bead can go in and under. And then that's how you can get them to come off. Because they, they don't stretch. No, they don't stretch. amount of tension. I'm going to just try pulling this way even farther. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Duh. Duh. How dumb can you get? Pretty dumb, Bob. You know, five dollars and ninety-five cent Harbor Freight tire iron. What can I say? Buck three eighty. All right. Now it's gravy. Cause she's over. All right. Once it gets past half, it's off. Now, let's do it like we did last summer, baby. <sighs> Soapy water, nothing but Dawn and water. A few teaspoons of Dawn in there. better if you get the hook, Captain. Alright, this is too much work, ain't it, guys? Jesus. Who the hell showed you how to do this? Maybe I can get that little guy in there. There we go. Once they start coming, it's pretty easy. Probably if I get this one off, Bingo! Dead tire. Alright. Keep those aside for just a minute. We're going to check this one for rust and corrosion. Clean up the vent because we don't want that shit in our beads. Get the soapy water off. She's got plenty of slick, slicker on here, I think, to go on. We don't want to goop it too much because of the tire sealer, you know? All right. This next one is ugly. I don't know how well it's going to go on. It's all caved in. You can see the sides are all caved in like weird, weirdness. So, wish me luck. I'm going to hit this with so. I'm 
looking to see, ouch, there's a sharp burr on that wheel where I got it with the ding. Holy cow, she's halfway on now. This thing's going on. Come on. I can get this one in. There's a stinking sharp burr inside the wheel. Be where I want to put my hand. Of course. I probably should bolt this thing down and make it a lot easier. So I had the motorcycle tire system in here like that. inches left. Maybe I can get that with my own. Yep. Now the tire iron is inside the tire. Gotta get that out somehow. There it is. shape. But if I can do it, I'm old. I'll be 68 in a couple of weeks. I'm still going. I'm going mini bike riding in a couple weeks. Down. Oh man. I'm keeping that t-shirt. That's my P40 t-shirt. See how the second one goes. Get this one started over the edge. And then you push her down around the edges as much as you can to get her started. Let's see if you gotta get that. That guy in there like that. Because it's got to be able to move towards the valve that you're seeing up here. So I don't need that guy. I'm holding it here. And we're halfway, so she should start to go. Now, as I showed before, you got to keep it down with your elbow in this drop center. Alright, we're playing. Taking that hat off and sweating like a pig. Because it's got to go under that top drop center to go that way. So it'll go on. Okay. Can't get it down to the drop center. Alright, get in there. Once it starts in, it should be alright.
Okay, so she started under now. So I can take this guy. As soon as I pop this one, she'll be gone. Don't let the iron come up and hit you in the head, though. That would suck. Like I almost just did. Again, we're down that drop center so the tire, well, the wire bead can go towards this side. Otherwise, she ain't moving. No, she ain't. Get this guy in there. I need a bigger one in here. I'm just going to use that. Jeez. I got just inches to go now. All right. Sorry. All right. Quick clean up here. Push it off the beat. Get your. So, okay, they're very tough, tough sidewall wheels, tires, I mean. So, yeah, I'm working hard. Are you afraid of hard work? Then don't do this. All right. Start right here on the front edge. That's where I need to push this down a lot. <sighs> I can see up in that one pretty good. how much pressure to, to pop that tire or the other tire on. I had that pipe to 30, 40 pounds, I guess. Use your brain instead of your brawn, I guess. Get it up under there. Duh, I should have thought of this before. This works so much better. Pry bar. I'm just going a little at a time here. It makes it easier. I can see exactly where I'm putting the goo. Now there is a, a detent around this bead. I guess they call it a bead lock on these wheels too. That the, the rim has to, the bead on the tire has to hop up over and pop on and that's why it's going bang when I'm mounting it because it's finally popping over that. All right, so do you feel lucky, punk? <sighs> She's forced herself out against the wheel already. So this one's gonna work just like the other one did. 
just gonna pop right in there. Whew. Where my arrow hose went, there she is. See if she goes. Oh yeah. Now these tires can jump, but these tires are already fully expanded. They're only going to go a tiny bit. Yes, they can pop with bigger tires. It's going to pop right in my face. Watch it right there on the left. Here she comes. Let's see what the other side did. The other side's all on. She slipped, slipped on there. Well, we were out. <laughs> so there you go. That's it, guys. Two tires mounted. Big tracker tires. Uh, these are 2310 by 12 inch wheels. These are Kenda TerraTrack. I think they're awesome for your uh, lawn tractor, but hey, I don't see why you couldn't use them on a go-kart or an ATV. They are awesome tires. Um, they've got a semi, they're not a mudslinger, but uh, I don't see what could much could stop them. I just probably will regret saying that because I'll hear all kinds of crap about it. But... Alright, I'll have to clean the things up a little bit here. There we are. Two wheels mounted, two wheels done. I'll have to check the pressure on these when I get out there. I think they're only supposed to be about 10 or 12 pounds. 20 at the most, it says. Maximum. So, we'll go out and we'll see where we're at with it, where we're at, and uh, the wheel weight's back on. Okay, the first thing let's do, let's uh, do a pressure check. Yeah, I'm up to uh, 25. I think I'm going to run it back to 15 for right now. Check the other one. The tire video is my favorite. That one's up to 25. Put it right up there. Another air compressor in here so I can pump it up from there. down to 20. I have the same Terra tracks on the front, 16 uh, 650s by 8s on the front of this tractor. I'm 17. Bada boom, bada bing. I think I got a tire cap on here somewhere. See the one's missing on that one tire. They're hard to get the dang wheel weights on. I can always 
find one later. No big deal, is it? Oh, I gotta go get the uh, whammer jammer. All right, Mr. Twisty. Put a little anti sleeves on these bolts before we get started here. Uh, this was a 5 8 true. quarter to put the wheel weights back on. Alright. I'm going to set this on uh, low. I'm going to sleeve these up first. I wouldn't want these tires to be out of balance. Let me soak the shit out of them with some Juice the matic here. Just to help keep down the corrosion over the years. Yeah, okay. That'll last about three minutes. No, it won't. That'll last a long time. Yeah, I don't think so. Who have I been listening to? Buddy from Minnesota, now Tennessee. Never heard of me before. But not many have. In case I ever want to get these lug nuts, lug bolts, these are like a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen wheels, at least on the old Beatles. I think on the buses, yeah, I had a bus and it had bolts instead of lug nuts. So that's what we got here. This will just help them from rotting together and never coming off, snapping off next time I put them on. Alright, now there's likely this rides on a hub, not on the bolts. Just like a car. It has to be pain. There you go. I'll get that one in hand tight. Then it won't come off. <sighs> Are we having fun yet? Learning anything yet? I don't know. I'm just, I never did this on this tractor before, so I'm learning it as we go, kids. Learning it as we go. Remember, I need the head extension, duh. Alright. Uh, yeah. uh, excuse me. You saw my uh, scrambled egg sandwich video. You know why that was happening. You know, the other miserable job is getting those wheel weights back on. I don't really need to put them on right now. But I leave them on all the time anyway because the snow season's coming up. Ugh. I don't even know if I'm going to put chains on this thing this year. Look at that. Look at that tire. That is freaking incredible. 
That's a beast of a tire. Okay, we're on the other side now. Uh, of course, I left the damn wrench over there. Uh, clean, if I can just clean it off. Uh. There we go. Oh, forgot my snot too. Get one in almost all the way by hand, then it won't flip off the hub. Because the hub is where it bears all the weight. That's a weight bearing flange. The bolts just kind of hold the wheel in position, you know. We need some kind of road test on this, don't we? That one doesn't want to go in. There she goes. We're just rubbing on the wheel a little bit. The wheel is misaligned just a little bit on that wheel. Yeah, I anti sleaze just about everything. Except stuff that's needed to be torqued and all that. I prefer something that I might have to repair in the future. Awesome, awesome. I'm trying to decide whether I want to... Uh, now this thing sits on the front axle so, so you can tip it. Uh, if I want to... I, really, I don't know if you saw my video revamping this little jack of a little while ago. But this is going to be a pain in the ass. I can guarantee you that one right now. Uh, of course, I left my. Wrench o matic over here. How this guy works uh, is. Tell us, Bob, tell us. Hiring Bob fans want to know. Uh, I got years of grass stuck in here. Anyway. Now these things do kind of fit in the wheel a little bit and kind of semi sort of hold themselves. <laughs> They're heavier than a mofo. And uh, I'm thinking the best way to get the top one in, let's just start with the bolt right in there. Oh, God. 
Yeah, right. What the? F you're right in my way, you know. I'm trying to be nice, but you're right in my way. Nope, oh, I got the nut through. Got the bolt through. All right. Once you get over the punies, this ain't too bad. I'm gonna run that nut right down until she touches. That'll help. All right. Ain't that fun. You guys are missing out on all this. All right. So I got one more giant bolt. Goes through, hits the hole in the wheel. I guess there ain't much adjustment to it. Kind of looks like it's centered and all that, don't it? So here's what we're going to do. I got the three-quarter to hold the inside. I'm going to put this guy on light again. I guess it don't matter. I got to hold that. Top knot. That's it. Alright. You guys don't need to see me do the other one. Because I know that was way too much fun. We couldn't do this without a test ride.
Minnesota Bob's Bar and Workshop. I uh, hope you appreciate. I get to show you the whole job. I don't take any shortcuts or any fancy editing. You get to see the knuckle busting. You get to see the easy parts. You get to see the hard parts. That's just the way I do it, you know? You gotta learn how, that every job is gonna have its caveats. It's gonna have its busted bolts. It's gonna have its rust. It's gonna have stuff that just don't go on like all you gotta do is, sometimes all you gotta do is, is work your ass off, you know? <laughs> Bust some knuckles, so. No dream jobs here. We all uh, just work hard at it, and, and I'm gonna keep bringing you more great content. I have more content on doing the valve uh, guide plates and uh, readjusting the valves on my 67 Mustang that has a 68 302 in it. And, 87 high compression heads and headers, nice long tube headers by Holly Flotec, dual exhaust, uh, electronic protronics igniter ignition, flamethrower I think it's called. What else? Holly 4 barrel, 500 CFM, uh, no not Holly, an Edelbrock I should say, and it's got an Edelbrock, an old vintage Edelbrock performer manifold. I don't want it to be a race car, I just want it to be a nice daily driver that lasts a long time. That's the goal of the Mustang. So we'll get to that. And of course I have more work to do on the Beetle. What else do I need to do that's a big project? Oh, I need to finish hooking up that electric water heater in my basement, unfortunately. My electric panel is next to the window there in the garage. My bathroom is around the corner from that end of the house, so I've got to run a wire from the panel up into the rafters over, and I'm going to come down the inside of the garage wall in some plastic PVC, and then there's a drop ceiling in the whole basement, and I'll run the whole length of the basement, and I'm going to put an instantaneous Titan water heater up in the rafters right below the bathroom, so now when you hit the bathroom faucet, the water will be hot almost instantly. All right, guys. Well, that's it for the uh, Kenda tires. They're really nice. They look awesome. You know, I look like I got an off-road machine now. Uh, we're going to give it a try in the snow without chains because the chains are a pain in the butt to put on, too. So the tires that were on the front, back when I had them on the front, you turn the tires into the grass and the flesh. She goes nice, cuts nice and turns just great, awesome, and all that fun stuff. I should pick this in the seat because uh, when it rains it gets wet, but I put a big garbage bag over it to keep it from soaking up the water. You can see the big split in it. Maybe someday I'll convert this to a 65 mile an hour uh, lawn tractor. If you saw that video, check out Cars and Cameras from a couple years ago. All right, guys, God bless. I will see any of my fans down at Busco Beach October 22nd through 24th. It's in Goldsboro, North Carolina. It's called Mini Mayhem. There's going to be a crap load of other guys with their homemade go-karts, factory go-karts, ATVs, three-wheelers, mini bikes, any kind of gizmo you can make up, contraption. They're going to go down there. They'll figure over 100, 150 people. A lot of different carts. It's going to be a long, fun weekend, and it's to celebrate their 1 million uh, subscribers. So I'm up to 2,700. <laughs> so guys, keep it going. God bless. We'll see you next time. <laughs>